let's move to the third uh, talk of the session. So we have Dong An on multi-product Hamiltonian simulation with uh, explicit commutator scaling. Okay, perfect. Hey, uh, thanks for the organizer and thanks for being here. So this is the joint work with uh, Junaid Aftab, who is a math graduate student from University of Maryland, and also Constantina Trevisa, who is a math professor from also from math department at UMD. So um, today's talk is about a uh, Hamiltonian simulation problem, so which is the problem of solving the dynamics, uh, the real-time evolution of this uh, uh, Hamiltonian age. So basically, like in today's talk, we will assume this Hamiltonian age to be time independent. That is, like we don't have any like time dependent driven term. But like uh, in some case, of course, we can make this age to be time dependent. So it corresponds to a time dependent Hamiltonian simulation problem. But, like in this talk, we also assume the Hamiltonian can be decomposed uh, or can be written as the summation of many simple Hamiltonians. So for example, like we have those H gamma to be uh, poly operators to be some local Hamiltonians, which we know how to compute the uh, evolution operator exactly. So the quantum algorithms are aiming at uh, implementing this uh, time evolution operator e to the negative IHT. So this is like the setup of the time independent Hamiltonian simulation problem. I think like many of you are quite familiar with this. And the Hamiltonian simulation problem is probably like one of the most promising applications of quantum computers. So basically like they're already like many existing powerful and efficient quantum algorithms on that. So like very roughly speaking, so all the existing algorithms can be like roughly uh, divided into two categories. So which is the product formula and so-called the post product methods. So for the product formula, since we, and we assume our Hamiltonian can be like, like it is the sum of many simple Hamiltonians, then like a natural idea is to uh, simulate the entire time evolution operator by the product of the uh, simple uh, uh, exponentials, this kind of like simple evolution operator. So for example, like in the first order product formula, we just use the, uh, the Lee Trotter formula and then like uh, evolve each uh, simple Hamiltonian up to the same time and take the product of all of these operators. So this is like a first order approximation. And of course, we can make this uh, product formula to be more accurate. So for example, like we can make the entire formula to be more symmetric. That is like we evolve the dynamics uh, from the first Hamiltonian to my final Hamiltonian up to a half time step. And then we go back forward from the last to the first for another half time step. And then like the entire formula will be more symmetric and it will have a, a better accuracy. So it's like a second order uh, convergence. And of course we can go even higher order by some kind of like Suzuki recursion or some other like, like uh, um, uh, recursive uh, 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 like, like, like approach, but like the, but like there's like another uh, categories of this kind of like post product methods, which is something like, which is something that is not the product of those uh, simple Hamiltonians. So for example, like their method based on truncated Taylor, a quantum signal processing cubitization or the, um, the, the recent quantum singular value transformation. So all of these uh, post product methods are trying to further improve the accuracy dependence in this kind of product formula because there's like a fundamental limitation of this, uh, of the accuracy that can be achieved by this product formula. So I would just have a comparison of these two existing categories of formulas in a more, uh, uh, in, like, like in a more specific way that is like, if we look at the query complexity of these two different methods. So when we talk about the query complexity, we usually care about uh, three different parameters. That is like, we care about the norm of the, uh, the Hamiltonians, or in many cases, it is just like the system size, the number of qubits of, of my, uh, of the problem. And we also care about the, the time dependence that is like how the query complexity depend on the overall simulation time. And of course, like the accuracy of the entire algorithm. So let's first take a look at this time and error dependence. So for the product formula, um, the time and error dependence are, they're they are not optimal actually. For example, like for a pth order product formula, we have the time dependence to be something like t to the power one plus one over p. And uh, this is like always super linear for, for a fixed order p. And actually it, it, is, it can be even worse. It's really because like we cannot uh, further, we cannot improve this kind of order p to make it to be almost linear. It's really because as long as we are constructing higher and higher order product formula, we have to use uh, exponentially many uh, local exponential terms. So it will prevent us from really getting 
uh, this kind of time scale into uh, almost linear. But like, also like for the error dependence, it is also like always polynomial in terms of this one over epsilon. Of course, we can make the degree of this polynomial to be as small as possible, but we can never really achieve a polylog scaling due to the same reason. And that is like the motivation of many of this kind of post-product method, for example, like the optimal post-product formula, uh, post-product method can really achieve a strictly linear scaling in terms of the time and uh, uh, log, one or, log, one or, log one over epsilon in terms of the error. I think it will also be divided by some log log factor, something like that. And those time and error dependence are optimal because there exists some lower bounds saying that, okay, this linear in T and log one over epsilon is the best thing that we can do. So this is like the, the advantage of this post-product method, which can achieve optimal time and error dependence. But there is some kind of disadvantage of this uh, post-product method, which is the norm dependence or the system size dependence. So it's really because like in many of the post-product methods, we need some kind of block encoding structure. So basically like we, we usually have this kind of uh, spectral norm dependence of my entire Hamiltonian. But like for the product formula, actually in a, in a recent paper by Childs and collaborators, they show that uh, they have this kind of commutator scalings. So the commutator is the, uh, like, like the commutator scaling is like the commutators among all of those uh, simple Hamiltonians H gamma. And we know that in many, uh, Many in many practical examples, we have some nice uh, locality structure or some kind of like uh, special structures among my Hamiltonian. So this commutator scaling can really uh, exploit all of this uh, special structure. So it can be much smaller than uh, the entire spectral norm of the Hamiltonian. So that is like the advantage of this product formula. And it's very important uh, advantage because this commutator scaling can have a very uh, can have, usually can have much better dependence in terms of the system size or the number of qubits. And then now we can see like by this comparison, we see like a trade-off between this standard uh, product formula and many of the post-product methods. Then here comes like a very natural question is that can we really combine um, the, both, the, the best properties of, of these uh, two different uh, categories of the method? That is like, can we really have a quantum algorithm which can have this commutator scaling that ex explore the locality of my problem, as well as optimal or at least near optimal time and error dependence. And this is like the, the formula that the method that I would like to discuss into this talk, which is exactly so-called the multi-product formula. So the, the idea of the multi-product formula is to use some uh, lower order product formula, but we further do a linear interpolation or linear combination of many different formulas. So here is the, uh, the, the multi-product formula. And basically like here, we start with this U2, which represents the uh, second order, the standard second order product formula. And the idea is that if we want to like simulate up to time T, then we will choose a time step size that is much smaller than this t. Uh, it is like t divided by this integer k of j. And we just we will choose different values of this k of j. And then basically like for this kind of u2 to the power kj, it's just like a, a second order product formula with uh, different time step sizes. And then we take the linear combination of all of these formulas. And this, this entire thing, this entire linear combination is so-called the multi-product formula. So why does this formula uh, work or why do we really expect this formula to combine all the best properties? It's really because, so first for the commutator scaling, because like the entire formula is based on the product formula. So for the product formula, we know the commutator scaling. So of course we would expect the entire formula also have some kind of commutator scaling. And of course, since here we are doing this kind of like interpolation idea, basically like we can, carefully choose all of these coefficients to cancel all the low order error terms and try to make sure that it, is, it achieves a really high order convergence and then have some near optimal time and precision dependence. So that is our expectation. And of course, like for this formula to make it to be an algorithm, we need to discuss some implementation, but uh, I will not discuss in details in today's talk. But basically like we have a quantum version, which is based on LCU. I think Dominic introduced that in, 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 the, in the first talk into this session. And also we can do this linear combination in a hybrid fashion. 
So this uh, multi-product formula is not a, it's not a new method. It's not like newly introduced in our work. So it, it actually like it was first introduced to the quantum world in this paper by Charles and Webb on solving uh, uh, also a Hamiltonian simulation task. And there's like a recent work find some choices of this uh, coefficients AJ and KJ to make sure that the entire formula can really achieve a high order convergence and stays well conditioned. So by well conditioned, it really refers to the fact that we can implement that formula efficiently. That is like the, the one norm of the coefficients are, are, are nicely bounded, something like that. And after that, there are several works on the theoretical analysis of the entire formula, but like there's before our work, there's still like a big gap between our expectation and the theoretical guarantee. And that is like before our work. So we don't really know a rigorous complexity estimate with all of the desired, uh, desired features that is like, we want the commutator scaling, we want this near optimal time and precision dependence. So basically like roughly speaking, like before our work, we know a formula of this multi-product <laughs> structure and we have some uh, expectation on this formula and there are some like partial evidence showing that it has all of these features, but we never know this. We didn't really know this uh, for sure uh, from a theoretical perspective. And the main result of our work is to fix this gap. That is like we have a, now we really have a rigorous guarantee on the complexity estimate and we have a explicit scaling on those commutators. And here comes our, our main result that is like we proved that for the multi-product formula based on the second product, second order product formula that I just show you in like maybe like in the previous slides. So the overall query complexity can be something like mu times t times polylog mu t uh, over epsilon. So here, let, let us first look at the uh, time and precision dependence. That is like, if you look at the time and precision dependence, something like uh, almost linear in terms of T, and we have a polylog in terms of one over epsilon. So basically like for time and precision, it is already achieving this kind of a near optimal dependence up to some uh, polylog factors. But like there, here's like another parameter, mu. So mu parameter is what we call the commutator scaling. And at this point, so mu, only depends on the nested commutators of all of my uh, simple Hamiltonians with terms larger than or equal to three. So it's like those nested commutators with depths larger than or equal to two, something like that. So basically like the point is that mu only depends on the commutators. So if all of the Hamiltonians commute with each other, then this mu would just be zero. So there's no error in the, in the entire formula. But like here, this mu can really explore the special structure of my Hamiltonians. So by this complexity analysis, we can really guarantee the, uh, the both uh, nice uh, features that we would like, we, 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 were, we were expecting for this uh, multi-product formula. So let me talk a little bit more about this uh, commutator scaling mu. So basically like for this mu parameter, so this becomes a little bit technical that is like, this commutator is defined by another homogeneous commutator factor, which is what we call alpha commutator J. So for this alpha J, it's just like the scaling of uh, nested commutators with J many Hamiltonians. So it's basically like we have H gamma one all the way to H gamma J. So they are like J many simple Hamiltonians and we just like compute uh, the summation of the spectral norm of all of these uh, commutators. So this is like the homogeneous commutator scaling uh, defined by this parameter alpha J. And our parameter mu is something like the superior of all of this homogeneous term, uh, larger than or equal to some order. So for example, like here, what we have is that we have this uh, alpha uh, j kappa plus one, and this kind of j kappa are some even numbers. So basically like here, the commutators that we are taking are the commutator, are nested commutators with term larger than or equal to three. It's really because like those j are assuming to be even numbers and then like we have this plus one, something like that. So here's like, I'm just trying to explain like, yeah, we have this uh, commutator scaling with number of terms larger than or equal to three. And actually like this kind of mu parameter is like another, a little bit more intuitive explanation is that it kind of like describing the, uh, the growth of my uh, commutator with respect to the order. So how can we say that it's really because like if we assume my uh, homogeneous commutator scaling alpha j to be something like n to the power j that is like a geometrically growing uh, a series. This n, in many, in many applications, it will, it will just be the number of qubits, but let's just assume if we have this kind of uh, a growth, then basically we can compute this mu just to be this kind of number n. So it's just kind of like the ratio between the 
uh, a, a, a one order higher nested commutator divided by some lower order nested commutators, which got kind of like describing the growth of this uh, a commutator in terms of uh, in terms of the depth. And I would like to also mention that this mu explore it is exploring the commutator scaling, but even in the worst case, it is still better than, or it is at least no worse than uh, the spectral norm dependence than the worst case. You can really prove that by directly bounding the commutator by uh, the mo uh, the product of the spectral norm of each Hamiltonian, then like everything just like becomes something like the overall spectral norm of the original Hamiltonian, which means that the commutator scaling is indeed an improvement compared to the to the worst case, to the to the standard uh, spectral norm dependence that was achieved by many um, uh, post product methods. So, like now we can compare our uh, second order uh, second order based multi product formula with this new complexity estimate with uh, many previous algorithms. So here's like a very rough comparison with the existing algorithm. Basically, that we are comparing with the standard second order product formula. We are comparing with the p order product formula and also like the best available post product method. So basically, like if we look at the time and error dependence, so as we've already shown, the, the multi product formula can achieve a, a near optimal scaling. So if we compare with this optimal scaling, we have some polylog overhead, but it's just like some minor or minor overhead. But if we really compare this multi product formula with the standard product formula, we can have a polynomial approximate a polynomial improvement. Although like the, the, the degree of this improvement will become less significant as, as we increase the, uh, the, the convergence order of the, pre of the product formula. And if you look at the norm dependence, so basically like the post product method does not have um, uh, commutator scaling, but now for the product formula and the multi product formula, we all have uh, commutator scaling. However, those commutator scaling does not depend on the same parameter. Like for the second order product formula, we have a dependence on the homogeneous uh, commutator scaling uh, with number of terms three. And for the p order, we have this alpha p plus one. And for our uh, multi-product formula, it's like another parameter mu, which is taking the superior of, of many other terms. And the, here comes like a next question that is like, how can we really compare all of those commutator scalings? Like they are all commutator scalings, but there might be some like more favorable or nice favorable things. And in general, this is like hard to compare because like they are kind of like, um, if, if we don't really look at the specific structure of some example of my Hamilton, it's really hard to say. But like in some application, we can make a more concrete comparison. So for example, like I wanna show you like one of the application, which is the power law interaction. Uh, so suppose that we have an n qubit d-dimensional square lattice, and basically on that lattice, we are defining the Hamiltonian, which is the summation of many two local Hamiltonians. So for, for, for each this h of i and j, they are acting non-trivially on only uh, two of this uh, lattice or two of the two of the qubits. And of course, we assume this uh, power law decaying as like for this h of i and j, the norm is decaying something like one over the distance between i and j to the power alpha, something like that. And here we are assuming a very fast decaying, namely this alpha parameter would be larger than or equal to the dimension of my lattice. So in this example, we can really compute all the commutator scaling and actually like the commutator scaling was computed it was computed in this nice paper on uh, Troyer errors. But like here we can use that result and compute all of this uh, query complexity. So for the time and error is the same as the uh, the general case, but if we look at the norm dependence in the in the best post product method, we have this n to the uh, n to the n to the three dependence, and in the in the in the multi product formula, we only have this power to be seven divided by three. So this is like an improvement from the the post product method due to the commutator scaling. But now, if we look at the product formula, which also has the commutator scaling, then we can see the second order based multi product formula also has a better scaling than the standard second order product formula, uh, which is like seven divided three over like this five divided by two. So it's like slightly better. And actually like the multi-product formula is matching the, the norm dependence if we take the order to be three, something like that. But if we cons really consider the high order product formula, we still have a worse uh, commutator scale. So the reason is really because in the multi-product formula, we still have some low order dependence that is like our commutator scale it still depends on the the, 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 like the, the nested commutator with only three terms or something like that. So we can further improve that by change the base sequence in the multi-product formula. So maybe I'll just like skip that part and uh, I can discuss that offline. 
And here's like, I, I show you like one example here, but also like there are some other applications on like electronic structure, k logo Hamiltonians. Basically like as long as the product formula can be advantaged, the, the multi-product formula will provide a further uh, improvement in terms of time and error. I'm gonna skip this kind of part and here comes the summary. So in today's talk, we, our main result is basically like we show a rigorous complexity estimate of a previous method, which is this kind of multi-product formula. And we show that it can have explicit commutator scaling and near optimal time and precision dependence. And if we compare the multi-product formula with the previous method, then it can exponentially outperform the product formula in precision and also like have a polynomially better scaling in terms of the system size. And with that, I would like to conclude and thank you for your attention. Thanks for the talk. Uh, I just wonder about the order of the polylog. Do you have an idea? Oh, the order for the second, second order based multi product formula is something like four or five. It's like, like log one where epsilon to the power four or something like that. Uh, thanks for a nice talk. I want to confirm that when you say for the cure capacity for the multi product formula, so which query are you exactly considering? And so, and, and, also, uh, and I also wonder why you, you can outperform the product formula on the precision from the um, uh, epsilon to the polylog. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Actually, like when we make the comparison, it was not like very fair because like I just mentioned this query complexity, but like actually for product formula and post product formula, we are using, maybe I just like, we are using actually different query models. So for the product formula and the multi-product formula, the query complexity is the number of the uh, simple exponential terms that we are using, those kind of like a time evolution operator of each h of gamma. So that is the terms that we are counting. But for the post product method, we are counting like a different, um, uh, a query model, which is usually like the block encoding of the entire Hamiltonian, something like that. And sorry, uh, if, uh, yeah. I want to continue with my question. So for example, if you say you in the multi product formula, you consider the input as the block encoding of Hamiltonians, then usually, I mean, for the, program, for the block encoding, it has a dependency, as let's say the alpha is about the spectral norm of the Hamiltonian, right? Oh, uh, how, uh, how you can improve uh, towards the QSVT methods about how you can remove the Special norm of Hamiltonian. Oh, oh, actually, actually, like for the multi product formula, we are not using the block encoding thing. Like for the multi product formula, because like the formula is constructed by the standard product formula. So we, we, we only need to like implement those uh, time evolution operators for simple Hamiltonians. So, like for multi product formula, we will never use the block encoding structure. And yeah, the block, yeah, the block encoding structure is only used in many of the post product methods, like the singular value transformation or some uh, computation. Oh, 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 that, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I can explain that a little bit more. So it's like, uh, yeah, like here, like the implementation is based on the LCU approach, but basically, like what we will have is the the block encoding of each entire unitary. So it is actually not a block encoding because, like, for product formula, if you know how to implement the simple exponential terms, then basically like you don't really need any extra axilla qubits. So it's just like this unitary itself. And then for the LC, you can just like implement the, the block encoding of the whole thing. But like uh, when, we, when we count the uh, query complexity, so we don't really use the block encoding for the input structure. So it's just the block encoding is just like the output of the entire formula. And sorry, so, so, so I'll quick uh, confirm. Is it UJ or U2 in this slide? Oh, it's U2. So that is the important idea. It's like we are only using the low order product formula to achieve some high order precision. I just had a question about what kind of KJ values you expect for these types of things. Oh, like the KJ values would be uh, uh, polynomial in terms of the number of the terms that we are, we are, we are linear combining. So it's like the, the point is that this KJ is not very, very large. That is the meaning, also the meaning of so-called the well-conditioned formula. Yeah, yeah. Would you have like uh, numbers off the top of your head? Uh, it's, I think like for, uh, for second, uh, if you want to like, uh, it's something like a tens of something like that. It's okay. 30, 40, something like that. Yeah, I think yeah. like in one of the paper that I mentioned, maybe like in the paper by, uh, yeah, yeah, by, by low and, and collaborators, they have a very nice table showing like all yeah. of these toys of the, 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 the parameters K and AJ. But like for those K, if I recall correctly, it's just like 
like 30, 40, or I think the largest choice would be something like 100 or something like that. It's not very large. Okay. I hope, hope it's not very large. I'm not sure if you have like a different opinion on that. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> If there is no further question, let's thank uh, the again.